How is everybody doing? I hope you're all well. We're going to take a look at the first 10 years of Madonna, 1983 to 1992, I guess, uh, from the first album to Erotica. Madonna is without doubt uh, one of the most successful female artists of all time. Her catalogue is quite big. Um, she's also um, got into acting, writing the odd book. So let's check it out right now. The debut was released in 1983. Um, this album is just called Madonna. Some people call it the first album. There's actually two covers. There's a black and white cover as well. Issued by Warner Brothers Sire label. Um, it's a pretty no nonsense um, affair. Uh, some great hits on it. The production is pretty in your face, you know, Lynn drums and sequencers and stuff. It just makes no pretense. It's just boom. Lucky Star, that was a pretty big hit at the time. Borderline, that's another good one. Uh, burning Up. I know it. Holiday, that was another big hit. Think of me. Physical attraction and everybody. Some of the tracks are a little bit mundane. You know, they kind of rock a little bit. Electric guitars with synthesizers and stuff like that. Um, and her voice is a little bit cartoon on this one. Um, but it's still a good album. Um, if you like 80s music, it's entertaining. Um, Pretty entertaining. Uh, some of the um, players here include um, guitar Reggie Lucas. I know he played with um, Miles Davis Electric Band in the 70s. Um, Anthony Jackson on bass. Um, what else is on this? Backing vocals. Gwyn Guthrie, Norma Jean Rice. Produced by um, Reggie Lucas. Um, recorded at Sigma Sound, New York City. Um, some of his songs are produced by um, John Jellybean Benitez. He was a DJ, he was a friend of Madonna. That's it, really. Um, interesting. And um, like I said, the, um, there's three or four really good tracks on it that became very big hits. Um, that's the uh, compact disc that's made in Germany. So that's the first one where it all began. Next one up is Like a Virgin. Uh, this is kind of her breakthrough in 1984. This is a, a digital recording, I think. Um, produced by Nile Rogers of chic fame, everybody knows him. Also production by Madonna and Steve Bray. Um, he also worked on other albums after this. Um, some big hits on this, Material Girl was a big one. Angel, Like a Virgin, that was a pretty big hit. Over and over. And there's a cover of Love Don't Live Here Anymore. Into the Groove, that was another big Hit. I think it was her first number one. Uh, Dress You Up, Should Be Do, and Pretender, and Stay. Um, yeah, some of the uh, tracks in this are, you know, apart from the hits, are a little bit. You know, they're not as. the stuff says, isn't in them. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, they're just a little bit repetitive. Um, production again is quite um, synth driven. But uh, the drums are played by um, Tommy Thompson and bass um, Bernard Edwards. So it's basically chic on the album. Um, fanatically recorded digitally from start to finish on Sony equipment. Hmm. Possibly a dash recorder. Um, and now Rogers on guitar, programming and stuff like that. Um, 
But yeah, this was this was a pretty big deal. This would have been one of the biggest albums in 1985. And, uh, recorded at the power station. And this was a pretty big deal. Um, everybody had this back then. And uh, she would kind of became a household name, looked like a virgin. Next up is True Blue. This was released in 1986. This was uh, an album that took her to another level um, completely and the reason is the songs by uh, Patrick Leonard are really really strong and some of her best tracks. So it's produced by Madonna, Patrick Leonard and Stephen Bray. So this one is possibly the album that broke her worldwide. Pop It On Breach, um, Open Your Heart, White Heat, um, Live To Tell, that's a fantastic song written by um, Patrick Leonard. Um, it was used in the movie um, at close range with um, Christopher Walken and Sean Penn who she married at the time. Where's the party? True Blue. Um, La Isla Bonita. That was another big hit. It was kind of um, a Latin Spanish uh, style song. Uh, Jimmy Jimmy. It was kind of throwaway pop. My least favourite um, song on this album. And then Love Makes the World Go Round. Again, it's kind of a uh, Latin touch to that as well. So, yeah. True Blue, as far as I know, is an analog recording. Recorded at um, Channel in um, LA. Um, yeah, it's, some, some, it's a strong album. The partnership between Madonna and Patrick Leonard was pretty. Uh, Fruitful. He wrote some great songs. I did some music and she wrote the lyrics on them. Lift to Tell particularly is a very strong song. Warner Brothers hated it at the time as well. Um, they thought it was too long, and too quiet and too somber. Good album and um, nice production. And uh, She's on a peak here with this one. Okay, next up is Who's That Girl? Original Motion Picture Soundtrack. Uh, this well, it's, it's kind of half a Madonna album and it's got other material by other artists. Um, the movie probably wasn't a big success. I remember when it came out Who's That Girl was a hit single in the summer of 19. 87. Um, it's another um, Pat Leonard um, production and then Causing a Commotion. Um, that's Stephen Bray, Look of Love, uh, Pat Leonard again. Um, what else is on here? Can't Stop, um, Stephen Bray, Madonna. And uh, that's it, really. The rest of the material is um, just. I don't know, stuff I've never even heard. Uh, 24 Hours by Duncan Farr, or whatever the hell his name is. Step by Step, Club Nouveau, uh, Turn It Up, Michael Davidson. Best Thing Ever, Scritti Politti. Well, I know that because I love Scritti Politti. It's on um, Provision, great album. And then we have um, El Coco Loco, So, So Bad, that's Cody. Monday, I think that's um, August Darnell, um, also involved in Kid Creole and the Coconuts. So yeah, it's it's just a kind of a collector's piece. You can pick this up very very cheap. Um, the Madonna stuff on it isn't even that strong. Um, could be left over. True blue stuff. I'm not sure. So yeah, it's like a collector's piece. Uh, Nothing of significance here, really. Um, 
Pretty bloody track is pretty good. But yeah, other than that, I mean, this is strictly not a Madonna album. It's just a bit of a a filler without the thrills. Next up is a compilation. You can dance. It's from 1987. That's really um, a bit of a cash in. Contains three special dub versions available on CD only. It's a, a continuous mix of um, seven tracks. Um, Spotlight um, is a track here that isn't on any other album. Um, I think it was written during the True Blue sessions. Um, I could be wrong, but definitely from the first few years you know you get the, the dubs here as well of where's the party into the groove holiday um, best for all segues together um, music um, is very dance orientated anyway um, a little bit of spiel here so um, yeah, that's it. Not essential really. Um, you'll probably own all the, um, the tracks of the 12 inches if you were a big fan. So uh, it's um, a bit of a novelty. Like a Prayer was released in 1989, uh, recorded in 1988, um, in the latter part of that year. Um, she'd kind of floundered a little bit. Um, between 87 and 89 but um, when this album was released it changed all that because this is probably her high point as an artist it says here a digital recording this is um, a superb album with um, very very strong material um, like a prayer express yourself love song to let do us part promise to try cherish dear Jesse oh father Keep It Together, Spanish Eyes, Act of Contrition. Uh, produced by Madonna and Patrick Leonard. And Stephen Bray also contributes. And there's one track with Prince. Possibly the weakest track on the album. Mm, it kind of doesn't seem to go anywhere. Um, but uh, this album is probably her masterpiece. Um, I don't think she's ever reached this peak. Um, not musically, because anything that came after this was a bit linear um, a lot of guests on this um, as well great um, production and uh, some of the drummers Jonathan Moffat Jeff Bacchero yeah he plays on um, Cherish it's the only song he plays on um, bass Guy Pratt Randy Jackson uh, guitars, uh, Chester Kame and David Williams, Dan Huff, Bruce Gage, acoustic guitar, Bruce Gage, keyboards, synthesizers, Pat Leonard, uh, Jai Winding, Stephen Bray, and uh, yeah. So there's um, lots to get your teeth into here. It's actually a very, very good album. Um, and um, I think if you kind of start off with this one, you'd be spoiled. Um, but, um, yeah, like I said, she's never really reached. She became even more famous, you know, throughout the uh, 90s, but she's. This is her artistic peak without a doubt. Next up is I'm Breathless, music from and inspired by the film Dick Tracy. It was a movie around well, uh, 1990. Uh, starring Warren Beatty. Um, uh, again, another novelty album. Um, it kind of harks back to the um, swing era. That's kind of the way the music is inspired. Produced by Madonna and Patrick Leonard. Um, and also Bill Buttrell, Kevin Gilbert and Shep Pettibone. Yeah, it's a bit of a strange one. Um, tasty disc, by the way. Very nice. For 1990. Oops. 
a daisy. Um, yeah, there's some pretty serious players on it as well. Um, um, yeah, he's a man. Yes, um, drums by Jeff Procaro. Fantastic drummer. Um, bass guy Pratt and uh, sooner or later that's a Stephen Sondheim track um, thank you Panky that's got um, Procaro on it again um, I'm going bananas it's kind of a Cuban kind of style song um, based by Abraham Laboreal another great session man Cry Baby, Procaro's on it again. Um, something to remember. Jeff Procaro, Bay Sky Pratt. Back in business. Most of the tracks are by Madonna and Leonard. Um, there's another couple of um, Sondheim tracks as well, more and What Can You Lose? And um, Yeah, so it's a kind of a mixed bag. It's it's nothing fantastic. It's just our voice is becoming a little bit better as well, um, especially since the last album, um, like a prayer. Um, now you can recognise her vocal. She's not as cartoon-like, um, and a lot of the overdubs on the vocal make it stronger. Um, and all of the end, this is Vogue, um, which is kind of a house track written with um, Shep Pettibone, who she went on to work with. Um, on her next album it's just kind of tacked on to the end of this it doesn't really fit in it's a bit strange that was a pretty big single at the time as well bizarre why it's here um, but yeah there we go. that's um, breathless and uh, you know like I said not with the value for fans next up is the Immaculate Collection this was the first Greatest Hits album from 1990 and a fine collection too Got all the hits you'd need for a casual fan holiday lucky star borderline like a virgin material girl crazy for you into the groove um lift to tell papa don't preach open your heart la ila bonita like a prayer express yourself cherish vogue justify my love rescue me it's another ship petty bone um as you can see here there's um q sound written on the disc um, it kind of made the sound float. It was kind of a process that they used um, back in the early 90s. And so a little look at the catalogue and the videos and the DVDs and all that kind of stuff. The first three albums remastered with um, some bonus tracks as well. Um, Um, yeah, there were some movies as well at the time. I think there was one called in bed with Madonna, I think that kind of one there. I can't remember. It was a big deal at the time. And uh, yeah, so that's um that the collection the hits. And finally we have Erotica. This was released in 1992. This was um, pretty controversial at the time. There was a book came out as well I think called uh, Sex um, which is now going for lots and lots of money. This was where everything became a little bit more um, club orientated. You know kind of laid back kind of beats and stuff like that um, and house um, album's a little bit long um, yeah, this is where she gets overly sophisticated talking and kind of rapping through certain songs and, you know references to all kinds of stuff um, 
So, um, Chef Pettibon is um, one of the co writers and producers. Um, most of the stuff now is sequenced as well. Um, yeah. So it's kind of, you know, aimed really at um, clubs and stuff like that. Um, of its time. And, um, there we go. That's it, really. Um, yeah, so uh, produced by Madonna and Chef Bone mainly. And uh, that's it, really. Um, I just think that after, um, like, a prayer, the album became a little bit one dimensional. Um, the ambition was kind of was kind of gone. A lot of it was kind of style over substance. Um, you know, it was well, they weren't as enjoyable. Um, you know, the, the music, um, music wasn't as um, how would I put it. Music wasn't as adventurous. And, um, Fold out is a bit of a nuisance because I can't. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's a bit ragged actually. But uh, yeah, it's 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 not bad, but it's kind of you know you don't don't take you in like the earlier stuff. And, uh, that's a common complaint. So yeah, uh, that's it. The Madonna. Um, the first ten years, more or less from 1982. Uh, some of the songs on the uh, first album are credited to, uh, credited to 1982 to 1992 so that's the first 10 years um, I hope you enjoyed this video if you did feel free to subscribe thanks for watching and take care